welcome to another episode of Real Reviews. My name is Jameson Rabbit, and this week I'm joined by Mike Roth. That's, that's it? Yeah, that's it. You're right. The Wikipedia page <laughs> is correct. I am Mike Roth. <laughs> <laughs> I see you as waiting for it with bated breath. Wow. <laughs> Insert your fun fact here. <laughs> um, we are back this week, and we have uh, some some movies for you, I guess we could call them. Yeah. Um, and let's just launch right into them. We have three movies on the marquee this week. Uh, the first one is a movie that I saw you didn't, and we're going to find out whether that was a good I'm idea. I really kind of surprised. <laughs> yeah. We're going to find out if it was a good idea that you skipped it or not, or if you really missed out. So the first one we have this week is a film called Do You Believe? Do You Believe is the newest um, film brought to you by this uh, company who produces um, films with a Christian message to them. And they uh, incorporate Hollywood stars into their films um, with a positive message. Um, this film stars Sean Astin, Mira Sorvino, Ted McGinley. You know him as Jefferson Darcy from Married with Children. Uh, oh, yeah. There you go. Big stars. <laughs> uh, Lee Majors, Sybil Shepard. Okay, this is 1982, these right? Yeah, these yeah. are big names. Um, and, of course, Brian Bosworth. The Boz. The Boz. Um, uh, among, among others. Um, and it is basically the story of 12 separate stories being told about 12 separate people and their issues in their lives of real people. Um, you've got a f uh, people who, uh, who are dying. You have people who are homeless. You have people who have lost a child. You have people who, uh, who are struggling with faith. You have people who are gang members. All of these things. Ted McGinley plays a pastor. Um, and their stories kind of intertwine a little bit throughout the movie. Um, and the movie is, they try very much to make it like the Oscar award winning movie Crash, where towards movie. the end, everything literally crashes together. Yeah. This movie did the same. Spoiler alert, the movie climaxes in a l huge pile up crash on a bridge in which our 12 random participants all smash into each other on the bridge. It's crash. They crash. <laughs> and you have chaos of, Babies being born on the bridge while oh. while cars are going over the bridge mm -hmm. and cars are on fire and who's gonna save who and and um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so you're saying exciting? Yeah, big time excitement. Okay. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, um, with this movie and uh, they they have a message mm -hmm. and the message is one that um, wherever whichever side of the aisle you stand on, they beat you over the head with said message. Um, and it is done, um, there are some really great emotional moments in the movie, but unfortunately the acting, these are star, I mean stars at one point or another, every one of these people that I listed off has been the lead in a movie. We have Oscar award winning actors in this movie. And for me, for my money, the best performance out of the film was done by Brian Bosworth. He was the most Realistic yeah. human being in the movie. He wasn't ever a really good actor. Um, I will point to Stone Cold and say you're wrong. <laughs> oh, God. Well, would you say it's mostly because of the writing, or uh, because sometimes you get a great actor, but they don't have the right content so, so it come across? To me, it felt like there was a lot of phoning it in going on, ah. specifically by Sean Astin. Okay. He was the worst of the group, and he's probably, arguably, the best actor of the group. Um, Maybe if he was a hobbit. Right. <laughs> if he was CGI'd into it. Um, it just felt so, so ham-fisted um, where they were going with it. You could see where it was going the whole way. And it was just, you know. Um, unfortunately, I think that um, in the realm of religious movies... Um, that they have a really bad rap, and it's well deserved for making terrible movies. Yeah, and and it's not helping by making really contrite, terrible movies. That that uh, everything. I mean, okay. At one point, there's there's two uh, there's two African American gentlemen. They're brothers. They're in a gang. One of them decides to change his life, turn it for the better. His brother will not let him, and so his brother is still in the gang, trying to hold him down. You don't know their names until at one point the older brother calls the one who's trying to turn his life around and you look on the caller ID and see his name? Criminal. Criminal is calling you. <laughs> like, really? Could it be more cliched? Um, so anyways, do you believe? I, it's in theaters. I don't recommend seeing it. I gave it one star. I oh. was not 
overly impressed with it. Um, if the boss is the best part of your movie, you have failed. So compared to the identical, if I had to see... I, I think it was better than the identical. All right! Yeah, <laughs> there we did go. We it, did we give it a half a star? I, I mean, think it might have gotten a half a star if you didn't take it seriously and yeah. looked at it as like I do a, believe it had some emotional moments, but uh, for the most part it was... Just a, another miss by this company and uh, the director, John Gunn. So I say, skip it! Uh, the next movie on the marquee, sir, you have one. I have The Gunman. It's Ooh. also stashed with a lot of yes. really big names. We haven't seen Sean Penn in quite a while. And he, of course, stars in this role. Um, it's about uh, a man uh, played by Sean Penn. He was uh, in some kind of deal where he had to be the trigger man of assassination of a minister of mining in um, the Congo. Right. Well, after he shoots, uh, he has to disappear, and he's gone for eight years. He left the love of his life, left her to a friend. Um, he comes back to the Congo eight years later to do some humanitarian things because of all the guilt that's in his soul, and he just has to get rid of it. And Lord and behold, people are trying to kill him. <laughs> they didn't like what he did. No, they did not. Well, he goes on a fact-finding mission to find out why he is being targeted. So he goes to all his old friends. Uh, old romance sparks up again with, uh, I'm going to try the name, do it, do it. Jasmine Trin Trinka. Yeah. I'm gonna, there we go. So. If I said it wrong, please complain to me. Um, <laughs> uh, it is a high-action movie. Mm -hmm. it's, and actually acted really well, but they weren't given material to act well with. Um, the dialogue seemed off. Um, the plot was a little confusing, I thought, until it, it kind of explains more at the end. But by the time you get the information, you really don't care what is happening. Um, it's They had some great location. It just... Um, it was sloppy. And it's a really a big shame that... Um, all these great actors had to star in something that was pretty bad. You had the same experience with the movie you just reviewed. Yeah, and with this one, I mean, I was excited. Okay, Sean Penn, I, I think he can be really great, and I think he can be really full of himself in films. Um, this one definitely had the feel of a Sean Penn movie where he had a message to put over. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate what they were trying to do. And if you've seen the Oscar-nominated documentary Virunga about the Congo region and how it has been exploited mm -hmm. by everyone and how it's been war-torn, this felt like it was very much trying to spread that message. It had the agenda of, through all the news reports to open the movie, throughout yeah. the movie of war-torn Congo, the people are, that's fine. If they wanted to push that message, then they should have pushed more of that message. This movie was more of a showcase of Sean um, Penn's new pecs. Well, I, I really they, think the, they, the other part is that <laughs> Sean Penn. Okay, this is against type to him for him to be the action hero to yeah. be the big ripped guy. That's fine. We've seen this is happening lately, but it also, like you said, it felt like it was really scattershot, especially in the middle, where it felt like we were supposed to know some information that we weren't given. Yeah. They're talking, it got really serious and long, drawn out dialogue in certain scenes, mm -hmm. and they're talking about, well, you know so-and-so and so-and-so, and, -so and -so. I don't know who these people are. And it felt like they had some scenes that they'd shot that forgot to put in the movie <laughs> to yeah. help me get from point A to point B. Um, the other thing that really kind of bothered me was, what made this movie intriguing to me from the outset was the cast. Sean Penn, Javier Bardem, Oscar Award winner Javier Bardem, Idris Elba, who I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for this cast. I've seen Javier Bardem be one of the most convincing bad guys in films, in No Country for Old Men, in Skyfall. Yeah, yeah. Terrifying, right? This movie, I didn't get that. I got... We'll see a guy who was in it for 20 minutes. And, and that's what he was. I mean, I don't think his character was supposed to be scary. He was supposed no. to be the wussy guy. But he was, I felt miscast in that role. Yeah. He felt, and then, so, okay, Idris Elba. I love Idris Elba. I think mm -hmm. he's a phenomenal actor. No, Spoiler alert, he has one scene in the movie, basically. He's in the movie for two minutes. Yeah. That's a, a huge waste of talent and a huge waste of resources to then put the weight of the rest of the movie on Sean Penn's shoulders, which he can carry it, but the rest of it is on a, a variant of other actors who cannot carry that weight. And I think that's where it fell. And another thing that doesn't help is this is the movie that has been playing 
almost every week, it seems like, for well, the past is, couple of months. This is directed by Pierre Morrill, who filmed has the first did, Taken movie. Yeah. Um, this, you know, has the same feel and the same look, and I enjoyed the first Taken movie. Mm -hmm. And it, it had the same feel of, of great locations, beautiful shots. But Taken has been pretty much spinned off so much with Equalizer, November Man, Taken 3, um, last week's Run, all, uh, run night. all Night. It's the same yeah. story, and no one is deciding to mix it up. It's always an older gentleman with a mysterious, deadly past having to do... So this. The only thing different this movie has done than the other ones is every single one before this, they're trying to rescue a family, family member. In this one, Sean Penn just wants to rescue himself. Right. Yeah. Right. It, I mean, and later you throw on, the love triangle in. Yeah, there is a love triangle, but... For the most part, Sean Penn is just looking after Numero Uno until... Now, the action, I thought, was pretty good. I thought there were some good scenes, especially um, not the final one, but when there's a raid on the house. Mm -hmm. I thought that action was kind of fun. Um, I, I thought, but nothing spectacular. I thought there's only one memorable scene, and it's not the end scene, which uh, I would tell you about, but that would be a But it doesn't matter because you're going to see it coming for 10 minutes yeah. leading up to it. it. Until it actually happens, you're going to see this thing foreshadowed over and over. It, there was one suicide scene, which I know I've seen before in other movies, but, you know, it's always really powerful and it hasn't been used in a long time. And I thought that scene will be remembered later on. But overall, as this movie, uh, it's easily forgettable. Um, I won't even suggest Redbox for it. Yeah, I was... Really disappointed in it. I was hoping for something good because I really like this cast a lot. And the last movie I saw Sean Penn in, now it was a smaller role, but was The uh, Secret Life of Walter Mitty. I thought he was great in that role. I thought he was okay in this, but the rest of the movie let it down. And the script was just not there for him. And I just a waste of your resources. And so I ended up giving it two stars. I gave it also two stars. Yeah. I think it's well Way to go on the review. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and so the next movie we have is really the big movie of the week. It's the, uh, the blockbuster of the week, oh, if yeah. you will. And that is the sequel to Divergent. Uh, this one is the second film called Insurgent, starring Shailene Woodley, Miles Teller, Ansel Elgert, Kate Winslet, Theo James, Jai Curt Courtney. Uh, we have a new director on this one. Robert Schwenke steps into the director's chair for this sequel. Uh, we pick up with... Uh, Tris, as she is helping to lead the the insurgents, I guess you could say, yes. um, <laughs> as this young group of people decides to try and fight back against the government led by Kate Winslet, um, and they they there's a. There's a box in this movie. <laughs> I don't know what to say it. The most the, deadly the, fortune the, cookie in the world. The majority <laughs> of the plot of this movie surrounds this box that Kate Winslet has that is supposed to, when unlocked, it can only be unlocked by a divergent. Mm -hmm. um, you really had to have seen the first movie to understand this movie. Well, you really, I didn't understand what a divergent was in the first movie. And I love the first uh, movie. I think the second one actually said, hey, this is what a divergent yeah. do, does, and they're great at opening boxes. Yeah, and so you have to be a divergent, and you, there, you have to go through a series of simulations to unlock this box that has special powers, explains everything, will make everything great, and will give Kate Winslet un, unimaginable wealth and power and whatever. And so this movie is basically her trying to get the divergent to unlock it, the, them trying to fight back. Mm -hmm. A lot of action. A lot, a lot of action lot going of action. down. We are, uh, here's the thing. <laughs> I'm going to break away from the review for a second. Break it down. So, I know you and I have talked about this off mm -hmm. air, but um, the whole future dystopian world uh, where society is broken into castes and where the government is controlling everything and teenagers specifically are the ones who rise up and there's a chosen one who will lead us all to redemption. Yeah. This story has become so overplayed. This is, seems like a broken record that we've been saying for a couple of weeks now of come up with something better, come yeah. up with something original. I've seen this before, I've seen this before. It, and it, this feels like every Maze Runner, Hunger Games, The Giver uh, movie that I've seen recently. Yeah. And it, it, it's frustrating. And I, I, I'm hopeful of where it will go with the final two chapters. See, I, I actually... I kind of like a lot of these movies. Uh, Maze Runner, you know, I gave it good reviews, but it wasn't top of the list of these teen drama movies that are coming out. The problem with Insurgent is it 
doesn't really have a plot. It is more like a video game. The whole movie is about opening up this box and going through certain levels. I played this on my NES. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, I compare it a lot to Catching Fire, the second second in the uh, Hunger Games movie, because that one was also kind of the transition movie with a lot of action going on, mm -hmm. kind of transitioning, and even the climax of that film and the climax of this film are very similar. Yeah. Um, and so, I'm just saying, I, I, I actually enjoyed this movie, and I, I'm enjoying this franchise mm -hmm. more than I expected to. I'm just saying, I really want to see it go somewhere that I'm not expecting, yeah. and I'm just, I don't know that we need more of these franchises. Yeah, but I think they make, we need originality. They make boatloads of cash. That's the so. thing. The, the young adult market is saturated with these, thanks to the Hunger Games and Twilight and such. And it's a copycat world in a copycat market in Hollywood. And just mm -hmm. this is fine. Uh, getting back to <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> getting back to the view, though. I really like Shailene Woodley more mm -hmm. and more. Than I've seen her. I'm tracking down older movies of hers. I'm really digging her. I like her. I like her with the short hair, too. Thumbs yeah. up. Um, and I love Miles Teller. I just, everything I see him in, he plays such a jerk so convincingly. Yeah. <laughs> I really mm -hmm. dig him. Um, I don't know. I mean, what else do you have to say about Insurgent? Uh, really, you know, the action was good. Um, the CG si uh, was fine, mm -hmm. but it, it didn't grab me. It um, Where the other teen action movies, I feel... Like, oh, this is building onto the story. This felt more like a segue. Like, we need filler between the first one and the last one. And hopefully the last one will be excellent. This filler thing, I, I'm not sold on. This box kind of coming out of nowhere that has no really purpose except for once you unlock it, it will give you a message. It's uh, it's like, it's the R2 unit that we have to clean the carbon off of and we get Princess Leia's message. Yeah, but no one, who cares? Really, I would have loved that if the box unlocked and it's helped me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. That would have been home. awesome. Star somebody Wars tie-in. Somebody make that and send it to me. Yep. Um, <laughs> what did you ultimately give the movie? I <laughs> gave it a two and a half. Um, I, you could sit through it. You will enjoy the action. Um, if you like Divergent, you'll definitely want to see this because it's a sequel and you're going to want to finish out the story. But I wouldn't suggest starting up the series just because Insurgent is out. Um... I, I enjoyed it. I actually enjoyed it fairly well. Um, now, from talking with people who have read the books and mm -hmm. are big fans of the book series, um, I've heard from every one of them a bit of outrage because the movie really breaks from the books. In a big way, almost retelling a large chunk of the story in a, in a different story. Yeah. A different plot from what the book is. And I've heard a lot of people that have read the books not so happy with it. Well, it, um, it, books is a different medium. Books, you could right. actually get but I mean, into the inner thoughts But I mean, people. really that when we, telling a different story mm. than what the book was. Not okay. just like, like <laughs> adding characters, dropping characters. The story is actually going to be this story now. The plot's not going to go this way. It's going to go this way. Nah. Um, the box was not in the book. The box is not part of wow, the book at all. Wow, that is yeah. the movie. Yeah. Wow. So when your central focus is this box that wasn't in the book. Oh. You know, that's kind of big, right? That is So huge. I can understand that outrage. And so for me, not having read a book at all in my life. Um, spoiler alert. You know, <laughs> no. <laughs> how would, how great would that be? If this is where I come out. I don't know how to read it. Um, but not having read the book, I think maybe played into my favor. Mm -hmm. You can just take it in for what it is. Very. Um, and so I enjoyed the movie fairly well. I gave it three stars. Okay. I think it's fun. It's good action. I'm really hoping the last two, you know, part one and part two, as they are, want to do now, I'm really hoping that they uh, blow me away. Because I really like this cast. For a young adult yeah. movie, I really think this cast has serious acting chops. And, and I really, like I said, I love Divergent, and I want to see Divergent Continue. I, I kind of don't want to see Insurgent continue. All right. Well, we, we shall see. Um, that is our review of what is on the marquee this week. You, you know what this movie reminded me a oh, lot gosh. of? Please <laughs> tell me. Well, it's another movie about a female hero mm -hmm. in a walled-in city that they can't get out of mm -hmm. in the future, and she has to open up something to give a message to all the people. Do Sounds you know what great. I'm talking about? Uh, it sounds like a cartoon I used to watch. It is the movie Eon Flux. Ah, the movie throwback <laughs> this week. Eon Flux, starring the the lovely and talented Charlize Theron from 2005. 
uh, a loose adaptation of the Liquid Television cartoon show yep. uh, from the early 90s, if you saw that uh, on the same uh, channel that brought you Beavis and Butthead. Uh, this was a <laughs> high concept uh, show that was on late at night that I loved. Oh, yeah. Uh, turned into a movie which... Um, I want to say borrowed only name from the <laughs> source material. Yeah, this movie was taking place well after the cartoon series. Ten and years after, yeah, yeah, they decided to make the movie, which I thought was a bit strange. Yeah. I remember That's when this came odd. out, like, oh, oh yeah, I remember, I remember that show. It's odd that you decided to make it. Uh, Charlize Theron, you see her. It's, uh, it's big time action. Uh, big time CGI. We're in the future. There's craziness going on. Um, you, you have Frances McDormand in one of the craziest get-ups I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. The, yeah here, throw this wig on. And but they were trying to be like the cartoon. In the is. cartoon, if you've never seen Eon Flux, it's a, actually a great oh, so series. Good. So good. But it was very ahead of its time, maybe yeah. so ahead of a time we haven't caught up yet. It was one of my favorite things about that time of the early 90s adult cartoons when we were first starting to get into those yep. adult oriented cartoons and Eon Flux blew me away. Yeah. Um, and so I was I remember when this movie came out being very excited for it and being very disappointed in it. I, I'm sure. Upon watching it. <laughs> um, I, I really didn't see much of the Eon Flux cartoons when they were on. I didn't have cable when I was younger. Weird. Oh, but <laughs> I was so unpopular. But uh <laughs> <laughs> but um, when I saw this movie, I did see high action, and I did see um, some very interesting things in, like, uh, bio development that you still don't see very much. Most sci-fi is still about um, making things out of metal and making intelligence out of metal, and Eon Flux did have this whole idea of, well, you know, Biomass is more durable. It heals itself. We can make uh, trees into security systems. Sure. Or we could just, instead of prosthetics, we'll just give you monkey arms or whatever. Um, <laughs> you, want, you want monkey hands or feet? We can do that. For as far as the movie goes itself, no, it was not oh, spectacular. I but, really, really did not like this movie. But <laughs> it was so much better than the gunmen. <laughs> oh, man. I don't think so. I oh, disagree. Oh, come on now. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Charlize Theron factor makes it better, but for me, it's just the dialogue was awful, and the the effects were pretty bad throughout a big chunk of it. Like even like the most the one of the few, one of the things I really remembered from watching it back in two thousand five was um, her partner with the monkey feet. Yeah, and then rewatching it uh, this week, the fact that they showed. Somebody's hands, cut of somebody's hands picking things up, you're supposed to believe it's her feet. Uh -huh. And then when they show her, she's cut off at the knees in the shot, in every shot. Yeah. And then they cut back to hands and like, oh, those are her feet. Uh -huh. and they're like, that is so hacky. Um, I don't know. I, you and I have different opinions on this. <laughs> I, you and I had a long chain of messages yeah. back and forth, me and I, <laughs> telling you how much I loathe this and, movie. And I kept on uh, sending him messages of worse movies that yeah, are right. out there. Well, He's not like, this. this is the worst. It's like, no, what about Ultraviolet? That's so much worse. <laughs> so you're, if you're comparing it to Ultraviolet, that you're, you're admitting that it's not good. <laughs> if you're searching for terrible to be terrible. Um, Ian Flux, it is very... I. I it is very comparable for our movie throwback uh, when discussing Insurgents. And even though you don't like the movie, you do like Eon Flux, the original. I love yeah. the series. I would, that's one of those that I actually, after watching this movie, it made me want to go back and find the series now and oh, rewatch it. There you go. That, that was like a late night fix for me. I would, I would record on my VHS tapes. Mm -hmm. I would record the liquid television blocks and I would just watch them nonstop. I, I would only be able to see it if I went over to a friend's house. It was uh, pretty much Beavis and Butthead, Ian Flux, and I believe uh, either Spawn or Flack? They had, a, they had different things. They would also put little shorts in there. I remember there was a short, um, Donald Logue, the actor now, would, would set up a lot of things as a cab driver. Um, there was a great uh, little short, three minute short on every episode of surveillance camera footage of a guy working in a quickie mart and uh, getting hyped up on caffeine pills. It was, liquid television was way ahead of its time. Probably still is. It probably is. Yeah. I, when I do see little clips of the old Eon Flux, it's, it's like really it's so beyond. So Eon Flux, uh, that's that's your throwback. I don't recommend it. Mike might. Mike's I telling don't. you to go see yeah. it, so blame him if you go watch it. Uh, yeah. Well, maybe if you do watch a movie and you're like, oh, wow, I bet there is something similar to this that's better, you'll go see the series. I like it. There I you like go. That. I like that a lot. Uh, so going forward into uh, the month of April, 
we have uh, what is coming soon into theaters, the week of April 3rd. Uh, we have two movies, which couldn't be more different. Uh, the first movie we have is Woman in Gold, starring Helen Mirren and mm -hmm. Ryan Reynolds, about uh, a lady whose, whose family back in the turn of the century had a painting, a very famous painting. Their, their, her great aunt, I believe it was, was a famous artist. The Nazis came, they took the painting as they were, uh, as they would do, and uh, the painting has now been taken and sent to Austria. It's been residing in Austria since she wants the painting back. She hires Ryan Reynolds to be her lawyer. We're going after it, based on a true story. And we were just talking about this a couple days ago. I hope there is a love interest between just, the two. I, I really do. I'd like to see it. <laughs> <Mike's disturbed. laughs> um, and so that is our our uh, our drama of the week. Yeah. Um, the other drama of the week that we have is Furious Seven, the out of control seventh chapter of the Fast and the Furious Never film heard franchise. Of this. Really? Fair. No. You is it a big thing? <laughs> Uh, these trailers just look more and more insane. Um, it is, uh, I mean, if you if you know what Fast and the Furious is, this is the, the a big culmination, kind of putting a big bow on the series, tying it together all the parts. And we've been seeing the trailers for over a year now. So yeah. if you have well, not heard about this movie or the mm -hmm. franchise at all, uh, yeah, I yeah. mean, this is, this is <laughs> the big the big curiosity is obviously Paul Walker, one yeah. of the main stars of the movie, passed away this past winter in a car accident. Very Art, life imitating art, but uh, so his scenes were only half finished. Mm -hmm. So they used a, a lot of CGI technology, a lot of uh, remastering, using his brother as a stunt double, putting his face on that. And, and I've seen some side by side shots of the real Paul Walker and the images that they finished with, putting mm -hmm. his face, and it's spot on, really incredible. Oh, um, I know they spent a lot of money on this. Yeah. Yeah, and, a... and it's great. We bring in Jason Statham and Kurt Russell to join the cast of all the previous movies, along with The Rock, and it just looks insane. It's it big-time action. So uh, cars falling out of an airplane. Things just exploding everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, the, it looks looks like a good time. Looks like things are going to explode, I'm yeah. guessing. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, but that is that is the big movie opening the week of April 3rd. Uh, next episode, we will be talking about the Will Ferrell, Kevin Hart comedy, Get Hard. We'll also be talking about the Jim Parsons voiced uh, animated movie, Home. And Mike will have a special treat. <laughs> I have been looking, I saw this trailer for the first time just a couple of weeks ago. It follows. It looks absolutely wonderful. It I am follows. going to watch this movie with big smile on. I'm hoping this is the horror movie that's been going that's going to redeem all the horror movies that yeah, I have no, that's to not, suffer through. That's for not the past putting a lot of months. pressure on a film. Well, no, no, it hasn't. We One had, movie we had to a, lead them all. Let's see, we had Pyramid, Ouija. I don't um, remember them all. There's a lot of As above, bad. so below. Really bad horror movies. Um, I haven't seen. I good think the one, one that since... does it. I think the I think the horror movie that's going to kill it this year is the new Poultry Guys movie. But we'll get into that. I'm coming soon. I'm hoping. I'm yeah. hoping all these movies we'll actually be, blow away we'll be the last things that I've soon. seen. Uh, but before we leave you, of course, we would love it if you would go and find us on Facebook uh, at Real Reviews TV. Uh, find us on Twitter. Follow us there at Real Reviews TV. Uh, you can also find any of our previous episodes, older episodes, going back at KSUN.TV. Search Real Reviews. You'll find these smiling faces. Um, where else can they find us, sir? Uh, you can find us on YouTube. I uh, upload the show in case you have a Chromecast or a Fire Stick or a Roku and you can't watch our show online because of that, you could get YouTube and watch our show in full. How about that? Oh, one more thing I want to throw in. Quickly, sir. Breakfast Club uh, probably starts at a theater near you, wherever you are. And re-released into theaters for the 30th anniversary, if that don't make you feel old. Yep. Yikes. <laughs> uh, so, but until next week when we'll be discussing all the movies movies I just told you about. My name is Jameson. I'm Mike Roth. Thanks for watching.